Hello, I'm Dr Zoe Waller and I'm an Associate Professor in Drug Discovery at the UCL School of Pharmacy. This video is to explain a recent research paper in a simple way. It's just been published in the Journal of the American Chemical Society. You can find the links to the paper on the YouTube webpage. The title of the paper is Beyond Solvent Exclusion, I Motif Detecting Capability and an Alternative DNA Light Switching Mechanism in a Ruthenium II Polypyridal Complex. This work is the result of an exciting collaboration with Dr John Fielden in the School of Chemistry at UEA. We both supervised Philip Spence for his PhD. So let's look at what the paper is based on and the background associated with it. We start with our bodies. These are made up of many, many, many different types of cells. And within each of these cells is a nucleus. And this is where our genetic information is held in the form of DNA. DNA is made up of four building blocks, which we call bases, A, T, C, and G, otherwise known as adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. In DNA, two strands of the building blocks can coil together to form what is known as a double helix. This structure is a bit like a twisted ladder where the links between the strands or the rungs of the ladder hold them together. DNA that is made mostly of the bases G and C can actually form alternative structures such as G quadruplexes and I motifs. These, as you can see, look very different to the typical double helical structure that was first proposed by Watson and Crick in 1953. My group are interested in I motifs, which form in DNA which contains a lot of the base cytosine. We are looking for ways to visualise the I motif structure using compounds. So let's look at what the paper was about. So these are the type of compounds that we used in the paper. They are called ruthenium complexes. This means they contain the metal ruthenium, which you can see here on the periodic table. It's just below iron, which you've no doubt heard of before. These ruthenium complexes are made up of the metal ruthenium in the middle there, as well as organic molecules that bind the metal, and we call these ligands. In the complexes that we used, the ligands, the organic molecules, can arrange around the ruthenium in different ways. We call this one cis, this one trans, and this one mer. These names are based on their shape. So what do we already know about these compounds before we started working with them? Well, these compounds had already been made by others, but no one had looked at their interaction with DNA. So what we did then was looked at how these three different complexes interacted with different DNA structures. And then what we found was that the cis isomer actually has a special interaction with DNA. When this particular compound binds DNA, it lights up. This phenomenon is called phosphorescence. Phosphorescence is when light is given out by a substance after it has absorbed light. It is similar to fluorescence, but happens over a longer time scale. Everyday examples of phosphorescence include what is commonly referred to as glow-in-the-dark substances. These are often used in decorations, prints on clothing and watches. Even some Pandora beads will glow in the dark, as you can see. After charging up the glow in the dark material under a bright light, it will continue to glow for a long period of time. This is an example of phosphorescence. Over time, the glow will slowly fade away until you cannot see it anymore. In this work, we also found a new way compounds can light up or phosphoresce when bound to DNA. So what does this mean? Well, the way that the compound lights up on binding DNA could be used to visualise our special IMOT DNA structures 
in cells. This can give us more information about their potential role in diseases and help development of treatments for these. This work has been supported by the Biotechnology and Biological Sciences Research Council, who supported a Norwich Research Park Doctoral Training Partnership PhD studentship for Philip Spence. Our fluorescence and phosphorescence experiments were performed on an instrument that was bought on an Engineering and Physical Sciences Research Council funded grant. This project was carried out at UEA. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask by either tweeting me or by email. Thank you for watching and bye for now.